Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Sunday, February 12th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Indiana game is in 202 days. The game against Michigan in 286 days. We are going to be talking Ohio State football today, and we're going to be talking Ohio State running backs. That is a position with maybe more returning talent than just about anywhere else on the field for the Buckeyes. They have five guys coming back who have been scholarship running backs in previous seasons. No true freshmen this year, which is a little weird, but Mayan Williams, Travion Henderson, Dallin Hayden, Evan Pryor, and Chip Trainum all going to be back this year for the Buckeyes, all guys who have gotten carries in the past. And balancing all of that, well, that's going to be a little bit of a challenge this year. And that challenge is going to be something for uh, Tony Alford. He is the Ohio State running backs coach. You're going to be hearing directly from Tony Alford today from an interview we got to do with him a little while, a little bit earlier in the month. We're going to start with that fact, all those returning guys, five guys on that roster. Tony Alford has said in the past, it's not his job to keep them happy. It's their job to keep him happy. So how do you deal with having five returning guys in that running back room and balancing getting all those guys the ball? Well, again, I think it's open open conversations with guys and, and finding finding scenarios and situations where guys can perform, um, where guys, um, they, they kind of have their niche and things that they can do where we, because we, at the end of the day, you're trying to put your best 11 players on the field, right? And so we've got to find ways to get guys on the field that can help us win games. And, and um, if that means that you have certain packages or, or, or different things that you can present and do for us, and then we'll, we'll, we'll use that accordingly. Last year, the Buckeyes played a whole bunch of guys at running back, and that was sort of out of just pure necessity because guys kept getting hurt. They played a lot of different guys, and over the course of the year, I mean, that ultimately is a good thing, right? In terms of getting guys some exposure, getting guys some, some touches, and being able to point to a guy like Dallin Hayden as a true freshman putting up more than 100 yards rushing in that Maryland game and to be able to say, look, if you are good enough, you're going to be able to play early. So is there a benefit in recruiting to be able to sell that? Look, all these guys are getting touches. If you come here, you're going to get touches too. Well, I think it's, um, I wouldn't say it's been a recruiting tool. I mean, it, it's, this has always been a scenario where if you show that you can play, you you, you will. Um, you know, we've never... That was uncharted waters for me to have that many guys. I mean, injuries happen all across the board, but to have that many in, in the time span that we did, that, that was uncharted waters for me personally. But, um, but yeah, I think every, every young guy, when they watch, they can say, I've, not, I've got opportunities, and um, you know what you do with those opportunities is up to you. A couple minor injury updates for you that he talked about in just sort of very short answers, so we'll just kind of touch on it here. Travion Henderson doing great in his rehab. He's not going to be playing this spring, most likely. That's what Ryan Day said anyway. Should be ready to go in the summer, if not before. So there's your Travion Henderson update. Chip Trainum is back in the running back room this year as well. So what was the conversation like when Chip Trainum had to move over from linebacker to running back in the middle of the last season? You know, Chip is a consummate team guy, and he just wanted to play, and, and he, you know, he felt like he could help us kind of in our situation that we were in and kind of depleted of bodies, if you will. And, um, you know, he obviously had played the position at a high level, and... Um, so again, Chip is a constant player. He just wanted to play. And he said, if I can go over there and help, and help the football team, then you can coach them all in. And um, so we're, you know, and I've known Chip a long time in the recruiting process. It goes way back, but, and it, and it did, it helped. And uh, he, helped, he helped us out when needed. Well, we mentioned getting guys touches, and that's always a topic this time of year and how you get all these guys all their touches. But with this many guys, it maybe even is more so of a topic this year. So, is spreading things around maybe at least a way to keep guys healthy? I think they all would have played last year anyway. Right now, Chip probably wouldn't have had to come over. Right. Excuse me. Chip probably wouldn't have had to come over, mind you. But those guys would have all ended up playing anyway. Um, now, how many carries or things like that, I mean, I'm, I don't have crystal ball there. But, um, yeah, and like I say all the time, you know, that'll be dictated how the season's going and health and kind of where we're at and things like that. But I... I'd envision now down, you know, going into the season. Did you envision that he would have gotten as many carries? No, but then the carries he got, he performed and, and did a nice job for us. And um, and so you, you you just go to practice every day and you prepare him the best you can because you don't know what's coming. Um, you know, and I can appreciate you saying all the things that I went through. It's not I didn't go; our team went through that. Yeah. And um, you know, I said this back during the bowl press conferences. The whole the whole deal for me was really. I'm really trying to keep my players in, in that room, the emotions together, 
because that's frustrating. It's not just frustrating for coaches, but it's frustrating for them. You know, they're, they're highly um, competitive guys. And to, for them not to be able to go out and perform the way they'd like to perform for whatever the reasons, that gets frustrating for them too. And, and so really it wasn't about me, it was about them and, and trying to, you know, keep their frustration levels in check. If you Dallin Hayden had a very solid freshman season. He was not necessarily expected to be a big contributor. But then when all Evan Pryor went down, Trevian Henderson went down, Mayan Williams went down, all of a sudden Dallin Hayden was at the top of the depth chart for that Maryland game and put up a very big, uh, very big number, 143 yards rushing in that game. So what's next for him after a very big freshman season? Well, I think hopefully it builds his confidence. He and I had a conversation just yesterday, actually, about just him building his confidence and um, in eliminating the noise around him, you know, because there's, you know, you throw on, you turn on the, you know, turn on social media and that's what Dallas thinking this and Dallas doing that. Well, no, Dallas, what are we, where are we at here, right? And so, um, Dallas is going to be an excellent football player for us, and I think hopefully him having uh, the year that he had, hopefully this will be able just for him to really gain some confidence as we move into the spring. He's never been through an off season. He's never been through a spring, so this is still all new uncharted waters for him as well. And, and uh, but he's walking around with a different demeanor than he did early in the season, um, much more confident and, and secure with who he is, kind of in his own skin and. Um, so that's been this that's been fun to watch his maturation, but that's kind of what you expect and hope for him. But then he comes from a home where, you know, where, where, where Aaron and Chatoy are going to be very in tune to, okay, what are you thinking? What are you doing? How are you doing it? What's the next step? Um, so he so he comes from a, from a background like that as well. We've mentioned Evan Pryor. He missed all of last year with a knee injury, and he is still not going to be back yet this spring. So no Evan Pryor this spring, but... Is he someone who maybe can take on some of the role that Xavier Johnson had for the Buckeyes last year? I would like to think so. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We'd like to think so. And the time will tell. You know, he's a guy that we um, have always felt was going to have an integral part in our offense. And, and um, going into the season, we thought that, especially coming off the spring that he had had a year ago. Um, so hopefully he's going to be able to propel and, and move that forward and do the things that, that uh, we fully anticipate he can do. But to, to direct answer, yeah. When you have that many guys hurt at one time, it, it can be really challenging to balance. Those guys got to get healthy. Those guys got to spend time with the trainers. But then you also got to kind of keep them engaged because you know they're coming back at some point. So how do you balance keeping guys engaged while also dealing with all the stuff you have to do when you're actually hurt? Yeah, I, again, I still have to stay engaged in what we're doing. And yeah, they did. You know, Trey spent a lot more time with the trainers than he generally would, but but he's still in meetings and um, still engaged with what we were doing um, and still being an integral part. And so you have to help them keep them engaged, that, that keep them involved in the meeting, still ask them questions. Now, it might not be all the questions, like it may have been if he was actually playing, but they're still engaged, and they're and they're still a part of this 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 team, and a part of this family, a part of this unit. Because I think when they get disjointed and kind of off on their own, that's when you start to see problems. Because they feel like, well, I'm not involved. I'm not a part of anything anymore. Um, and and so, you know, you got to be creative in how you keep them involved in the way that I've done it, we have done it. Those kids still come to meetings. They still do everything that we do. Um, and because he's still a part of it and it's not like you're banished to Siberia and never coming back so we still have to stay engaged because when you do get back we're not going to try to have to reteach it in the things that we're doing so stay engaged and, and for someone like Trey you know um, who played a lot of ball obviously he, he can be a great help for um, a great help for 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 Dallin and guys like that desperate times call for desperate measures and things got fairly desperate in that running back room last year to the point that they brought Chip Trainum over from from linebacker midseason and then brought Xavier Johnson in from the wide receiver room at points during the season as well. Does Tony Alford view something like that as a challenge to incorporate guys into the room? Well, I think it's just, again, I guess I don't look at it as a challenge. I look at it as a necessity, right? This is, this is what we got to go do. And um, I think it speaks volumes about the guys like Xavier and Chip, for that matter. Um, that are team guys that want to help the team and okay well it's my job if we're gonna if we're gonna put you back here you've got to be able to perform the duties at a high level so it, whatever it takes whatever time it takes to get you ramped up um then that's what we got to go do and, and they've got to they got to grab and latch onto that as well but um but yeah this is what it is 
So that's the coach's side of that decision. But what does it say to Tony Alford about the player when a guy is willing to do that, just to, to make a move in the middle of the season, whatever he needs to do to be the next man up? Well, that's the type of people you want to be around, right? That they're, 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 they're problem solvers and, and guys that, that say, we have an issue. How can I? It's not, it's not moan and groan and bitch and moan about the problem, but let's, how do we fix it? And, and they want to be a part of the solution. Um, guys that are consummate team players that are very selfless. And I think we have a bunch of those in our locker room. I think our locker room is, is, is littered with those type of guys. Um, and and um, henceforth, we talk about that brotherhood, if you will, that you hear us throw around that term a lot. It's real. And um, it's guys like that that, that, that show that, that they'll, they'll do whatever is necessary to help our football team win. You know, you watch Xavier. Xavier's played offense. He's played defense. He's a stalwart on special teams. Um, he's played numerous positions in the middle of games, middle of seasons. It doesn't matter. He, he's the guy that just keeps keeps um, giving all he's got as us. Chip does the same type of thing. So those are the type of young people you want to be around. Chip Trainum went to Arizona State as a running back to start his college career, then came to Ohio State as a linebacker, and then shifted back to running back in the middle of last season. He is, of course, as we said earlier, staying at running back this year. So what made him decide that he wanted to stay at running back? You have to ask him. I, I think he I think he actually feels that that's probably his natural position. Um, and that's always what he wanted to be, even when we recruited him out of high school before he went to Arizona State. Um, but he'd have to he'd have to tell you that. But I but I bet you that's what he would say to you. Um, and I love having him in our room. He brings so much. He's a mature again, team guy very positive you know a very positive leadership that he brings out um, um, and so I, I love that about him and, and, and he knows that because I've, I've told him as such and, and to continue to do that and provide that for our football team. Travion Henderson had a very impressive freshman season for the Buckeyes and then kind of took a little bit of a step back obviously injuries playing a big part in that last year as a sophomore so after a sophomore season, season that definitely was not what he wanted is Trevian Henderson's confidence a concern at all this year? Well, I think the, the when Trey's got to get back out and start playing again, and that confidence will come back. Trey's a very confident guy, and he's a very goal-oriented guy. And um, I know, it, it, it um, lack of a better term, it bothered him greatly not to be able to play, perform at a high level. Um, I don't know about his cover. I know it's, it, he'll use that as a motivation, you know, just knowing the, knowing the young guy like I do. You know, he'll use that as great motivation to come back. And, um, you know, the biggest thing we got to guard against with him, me knowing I got to guard against with him, is uh, making sure that he's taking the time that he needs to take, that the doctor's telling him and not trying to do too much too fast and um, setting himself back um, because he's ready to go. I mean, he's very he's, he's very excited to be, you know, kind of get going again. And, um, again, since we've been off the road recruiting, you know, I've had these meetings with the players the past 48 hours, just really spending, spending a lot of individual time with each guy. I had nine of them, which is unusual, but spending some individual time with each of them about, okay, here's where we're at. But I do that anyway. A lot of it is phone calls when I was gone because I'm, I'm very, in, try to stay very in tune to my guys individually about what's going on in their lives and, um, you know, going on in their heart and soul and what they're thinking and, and things of that nature. So um, I can tell you this, he's excited to, to kind of get himself back going again. Well, that will do it for today's show. We will be back with another one of these a little later on in the week. The next person you're going to be hearing from is Perry Eliano on the safeties. That should be an interesting uh, interesting topic of conversation. There's a lot to talk about there on the safeties. We'll get to that show in a couple days. We'll have Tony Gerderman on tomorrow to talk about a whole bunch of other stuff. So it should be a busy and fun week here and a busy and fun week as well at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We're always talking about stuff there on our huddle board. You can sign up today to become a member and get access to all that, all the great insider information that we share with you there. You can also find a bunch of our stuff on YouTube at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. And finally, if you like podcasts, you want to listen to us in instead of look at us on YouTube, you can do that on whatever podcast platform you like. Just search Buckeye Huddle. You can find all of our great shows there. You can subscribe. We would also appreciate if you listen, leave us a five-star rating and review. That helps other folks find those shows. And nice thing you can do that doesn't take too long that really helps us out, and which we do truly appreciate. So that will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.